Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show how easy it is to install a ceiling fan with no pre-existing wiring. All right, well, maybe it's not that easy, but this is definitely a project that you can tackle yourself. So make sure you watch this video for step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. And for more DIY and tinkering videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Deck Tip Mechanic. Okay, let's start off by talking about the supplies you'll need for the job. The first and the most obvious is a fan. Uh, make sure you choose one that is best suitable for your application. I'll be working on a small room, so all I need is a 44-inch fan. Um, the second thing you'll need is a ceiling fan, electrical box, and brace kit. Uh, these kits are easy to install and uh, can support up to 70 pounds, and I've installed um, many of these over the, the years. Um, you'll need some Romex wire. The wire size will depend on the breaker you are um, working on. So, for example, I'll be working on a circuit that's controlled by a 20 amp breaker, so I'm using a 12 gauge wire. Um, that's this yellow wire here. Um, if you're on a 15 amp breaker, um, you can use 14 gauge wire. Um, you will also need some Romex metal staples to tidy up the wiring in the attic, um, some plastic strain reliefs to uh, keep the Romex from coming out of the electrical box, some wire nuts, and the last item is uh, application specific which is a pull chain light picture, which I'll explain later. Okay, safety first. Make sure to turn off the breaker, then verify it is indeed off. This is the section of the roof where I want the fan to go, but as you can see, there's no pre-existing wires there. So uh, this leads to our first step, which is finding a power source. Um, I originally wanted to use the light fixture in the room as the power source, but uh, when I took the light fixture off, I discovered that the electrical box was jam-packed. Um, it had uh, multiple different um, Romex wires going in. For example, it had the power coming into the box. It had the, the wires going to the switch. It had um, also power going to a outlet and then the wires for the light fixture as well. So it was going to be really difficult to get another set of Romex wires in there um, going to the fan. So uh, that's when I decided that the light in the closet would be um, a ideal power source for this project because it's controlled by its own switch. Um, now you're probably wondering that if I use that as a power source, the light in the closet will always be on when the fan is turned on. But uh, that's when that pull switch or that pull switch light fixture um, I talked about earlier will come into play and I'll be able to independently control that closet light with that fixture. Next I removed the old light fixture and removed the half inch punch out hole from the electrical box. Uh, this hole can be made by uh, simply using a screwdriver and uh, giving it a light tap with a hammer. Uh, this is where we will be feeding in our wire through. After that, I inserted my four foot flexible drill bit into the knockout hole of the electrical box and the uh, drilled through the ceiling. I picked up this drill bit at Harbor Freight a couple years ago and it's been a real lifesaver. Then I used some duct tape and attached the Romex wire to the end of the drill bit. Why duct tape? Well, you are watching the gosh dang duct tape mechanic. Next, I got up in the attic and located the drill bit. Once you find it, go ahead and pull it. It may require some wiggling to get the wire to start going through. However, if you find you are still not able to pull the wire, go ahead and expand the hole from the attic using a three, three quarter inch spade bit. Um, go ahead and pull the Romex wire until there's about a foot left sticking outside the electrical box. Um, we can always um, cut out the excess if we have some later. Now if you don't like going into the attic or only want to go up there once, go ahead and wait on pulling up the Romex until after you've made the hole for the electrical box um, for the fan. Next you want to use a 4 inch hole saw to drill a hole for the elect fan electrical box. You want this hole to be in between two ceiling joists so the brace will have something to press against and be held securely into position. However, I have a solid wood ceiling which doesn't have visible joists. Um, so I had to make uh, a couple pseudo joists using um, some 2x4s, which I'll show later, um, to hold the brace into place. Check out how thick the roof is. And yes, that was an old Tupperware container used to uh, 
prevent the dust from going everywhere. As I just mentioned, since this old house um, doesn't have studs on the ceiling that are visible, I had to create my own. I did this by cutting a couple pieces of 2x4 and screwing them to the ceiling of the attic. Um, since I wasn't sure how the lighting would be in the attic, I demonstrated this by uh, setting it up on my workbench and you can see how the 2x4s act as a brace to secure the electrical box. So then I went upstairs and secured the 2x4s to the ceiling using long screws. I kept the two pieces 13 and a quarter inches apart from each other as this would give me plenty of place to install and tighten the electrical box brace. I removed the box from the brace by undoing the nuts and uh, punched out a knockout hole for the Romex wire to be fed through. Then I placed the electrical box in the hole and uh, tapped it into place um, to get it in the proper location and then I went to install the brace. Installing the brace is uh, really easy as all you have to do is twist it and uh, one side will begin to expand as it gets unscrewed. Um, keep going until the teeth are sunk it into the studs or the joists. Um, the instructions call for just hand tightening but uh, I did give it a couple turns with my pliers as well. After I was satisfied with the brace being securely tightened, I began to feed some of the Romex wire through the ceiling fan box. Then go ahead and reinstall the nuts that hold the box into the bracket with the ratchet. After that, place the wire inside a plastic strain relief and insert it into the half inch knockout hole of the electrical box. This will keep your wire secured in place. Now we are done with what I consider to be the hard stuff and can move on to installing the fan. Open the box and remove the fan bracket. This is what secures the fan to the electrical box. Since my ceiling is very thick, I cannot use the screws provided with the brace and box kit as they are too short. Instead, I have to use these screws instead. Um, these are uh, 32 thread count, 3 inch long, number 10 machine screws. And if you have a similar, similar roof, uh, this will come in handy. So first I removed the screws that were provided with the electrical box and used the longer 3 inch screws to attach the bracket to the electrical box. Once it is tightened, the bracket should be flush with the ceiling. After that, I hung the fan motor on the bracket and began wiring the fan. The wiring is really simple as I just connected the, all the neutral wires together and I connected the blue and black wires from the fan to the black wire of the power coming in. The blue wire is for the lights and the black is for the fan motor. I then connected all the grounds together and after that I wrapped some electrical tape around the wire nuts for some good um, extra protection. Then I bolted the fan motor to the bracket. The assembly of the fan from this point on will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but uh, you can still get a good general idea of all the steps from watching the remaining of the video. After that, I attached the fan motor cover. Then I attached the fan blades to the motor and it was beginning to look more and more like a fan by the second. After that, I wired the light fixture. It has uh, color-coded wires with uh, push connectors so you don't have to worry about wire nutting anything together. Then I fastened the light fixture to the fan, installed the light bulbs, and the 
the glass bulb cover and just like that we had a beautiful looking fan. Now it was time to make the connections inside the closet. The wiring in the closet is also relatively simple. I started by attaching a plastic strain relief to the yellow Romex wire we installed earlier. This will keep that wire nice and secure. Then I wired the black wires from the pull switch light fixture, the switch from the switch that's inside the room, and the wire going to the fan all together. I did the same for all three neutral wires as well. Then I attached the ground to the casing of the electrical box. Um, and as I previously mentioned, the pull switch um, light fixture will allow us to independently operate the closet light regardless of whether the fan is on or off. The last thing was to go up to the attic and use the metal staples to secure the wire um, so nobody trips over them in the future. Don't forget to turn the power back on. Alright, so we got the power back on and we're going to turn the switch on and see how everything goes. Alright, and the light has turned on, so that's always a good sign. Let's check out the closet and see what's going on in there. Okay, the light's off, but that's why we installed this little $3 pull switch. And there you have it. So now you can control the light in the closet and it won't just automatically turn on when the fan is on. So let's turn that off. And go back to the fan and see how that operates. Just going to turn it on using this pull switch. And there she goes. So it's a pretty easy install, nice clean install. And you have a fan you can enjoy in the summer. So it helps move the air through the house quite well. Or through the room quite well, I should say.